The legend of Sonny Bean, the Scottish cannibal, is the inspiration for the movies The Hills Have Eyes. Bean was the son of a ditch digger and a hedger, and he disliked the work that he had been born into. So he decided to live a life of thievery and lying, and ran away with a married woman who was similar to himself. Bean and his new wife had no means of supporting themselves, so they took up residence in a cave in Galloway, Scotland. To make an income, Bean and his wife began to rob for a living. In order to avoid being caught or risking there being any evidence, the couple began murdering and butchering the people they robbed, taking them back to their cave and then eating them. Soon, Bean and his wife began having children, then through incest had many more grandchildren. There were 14 children and 32 grandchildren, making a total of 46 robbing, murdering cannibals. For 25 years, the Bean clan robbed and killed and lived in the sea cave in Galloway, killing more than a thousand people. Hi, my name is Gareth Harold, and I'm here interviewing Alexis Turley. We're going to ask her a few questions about the legend of Sonny Bean. And we've already explained the story to her, so we're going to jump in with some questions. So do you think that this legend is plausible? I do believe that this legend could possibly be plausible in the fact of how they formulated the story and it makes sense in how they killed people and they wanted to get rid of the evidence basically so that they couldn't be uh, found. But it is a little far-fetched, honestly. It's pretty gruesome, so I could see it, but I don't, I couldn't fully fathom picturing it in today's modern society. But for the time being, and this being an old folktale or urban legend, that it could be a possible story. What are your thoughts on cannibalism? Pretty gross. <laughs> I don't really, I would never be a cannibal. I could never think about eating my own kind, but back in those days, if that was all that you had, I mean, if you're hungry, that's all that's there, possibly. But in their circumstances, I just think that they were just, couldn't think of anything else to solve their problems, but it's still pretty gross. <laughs> I could never do it. <laughs> so if cannibalism wasn't part of the story, do you think it would still be as intriguing? Yes, I think, well, I think the cannibalism is what makes it like draws the attention and makes people want to be more interested in the story but I think the story would make more sense without it just because it would be more understanding and I could kind of see that but at the same time it wouldn't really make a good story because you would wonder how they wouldn't have found these people way sooner than they did but the reason that they didn't find them is only because they got rid of all the evidence that there was. All right well thank you for your time. No problem. <laughs> thank you for having me. Eventually, the family attacked a couple traveling along the beach from a fair. The husband, who stayed mounted on his horse, charged the group of cannibals and was able to hold them off long enough for a group to come and help him. They witnessed the Bean family disemboweling the murdered wife right there. The Bean family fled, but the man went to the town magistrate and then King James IV, the ruler of Scotland at the time, and the king led a hunting party of 400 people with bloodhounds to find the cannibalistic Bean family. The bloodhounds sniffed the family out of their hidden sea cave. The family's crimes were considered so heinous that they were put to death immediately. The 27 men were taken, and the 21 women and children were forced to watch as the men's limbs were cut off, and they were left to bleed to death. The women and children were then burned at the stake like witches.